Carrot and Carrot once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Today, I'm back with Vegetable of the Day, the one and only Carrot. So maybe you think all carrots are orange. Maybe you think carrots are only for rabbits. Maybe you love them. Maybe you hate them. Maybe you love carrot souffle. Well, whatever the case may be, please listen and watch on why, because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of the carrot. All right. First up, a little bit of background information. Now, a lot of us may ask a very simple age old question. What in the world are carrots? Well, guys, carrots are a type of root vegetable, one of the highest contributors of vitamin A in the American diet. Now, take a look at the picture. As you can see, the edible portion of the carrot is actually the root. Now, there is no rule to say that you can't eat the, the leaves of the carrot, right? But the most popular portion is the root, which happens to grow underground. So there we have it, guys. A little bit of background information about the one and only carrot. All right, more background information. While known for its signature orange color, they actually come in a variety of colors. Yellow, white, red, and purple carrots are now becoming available in more grocery stores and local farmers markets. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at the picture. As you can clearly see, carrots basically come in every color of the rainbow. Isn't that pretty? How nice. <laughs> Today, there are two main types of cultivated carrots. We have the Eastern or Asiatic, and then we have the Western carrot. So there we have it, guys. A little more colorful information about the one and only carrot. <clears throat> All right, now it's time to dive into a few fun facts. Some people avoid carrots because they believe they are high in sugar and will raise blood sugar. I'm sorry, blood glucose. However, this advice isn't supported by research. One cup of raw carrots contains only about 10 grams of carbohydrate and almost four grams of fiber. The fiber in the vegetable helps slow down the release of sugars into the bloodstream. So there's that myth debunked. Including them in a healthy diet can even be safe for someone who has diabetes because they prevent any drastic increases in blood sugar. That being said, diabetics or anyone else who may have trouble balancing blood sugar levels should limit their consumption of carrot juice. As juicing carrots can, can concentrate the sugar in the vegetable because this process removes the protective fiber. So in a nutshell, here's what this is saying. Even if you are a diabetic or if you're not a diabetic, it's fine to go ahead and eat an actual carrot. Why? Because it contains fiber, which basically so slows down the release of the sugar into your bloodstream. Now, they are warning us against consuming too much carrot juice, especially if it's processed. Now, the dangers of carrot juice, well, it doesn't contain fiber or it contains very little fiber, which will then cause a spike in your blood glucose levels. So, ladies and gentlemen, eat carrots and lower the risk of diabetes. <laughs> so there we have it, guys. A few fun facts about the one and only carrot. All right, more fun facts. Now, a lot of people may want to know, which is better, Coach D, organic or conventional carrots? Well, let's find out. It is best to consume whole organic carrots if possible, which may be higher in antioxidants. According to sources, including the organic guides, residual levels of toxic pesticides are found at much higher levels in conventionally grown carrots than in organic varieties. And out of the top 48 popular fruits and vegetables, the Environmental Working Group lists carrots as the 22nd most contaminated. Therefore, to get the most carrot and carrot juice benefits without consuming a high level of toxins, always try to buy organically gone versions. So there we have it, guys. We now know which type of carrot is best. If you can make yourself uh, go to a farmer's market or if you know of a grocery store that primarily sells organic carrots, then always opt for the organic variety. Unfortunately, the conventional type 
does have pesticide residues. So keep your body healthy, keep your body safe, and opt for organic options. So there we go, guys. A few more fun facts about the one and only carrot. All right, more fun facts. A lot of people may also want to know, how long do carrots last? Well, here we go. Fresh whole varieties should last about four to five weeks in the fridge, while baby carrots last for only about three to four weeks. Oh, no. Another popular question, is it good to eat raw carrots, right? Well, the answer is yes. The fiber content may be higher in raw varieties since it is not broken down through cooking. So we now know exactly how long carrots last and we also know whether or not it's a good idea to eat raw carrots. All right, more questions, more fun facts. Our next question is, is baby carrots nutrition the same as bigger types? Well, here we go. Baby carrots tend to be peeled and preserved, which means they may be a bit lower in certain nutrients compared to fresh varieties. They are usually washed in chlorine before packaging. Therefore, they should not be on your first choice when it comes to carrots. Instead, try eating carrots whole instead of juicing them. While they are convenient and kid-friendly, if possible, consider cutting and peeling your own to retain the most vitamins. Wow, who knew that baby carrots weren't good for the babies? <laughs> so there we have it, guys. You probably want to stay away from the uh, baby carrots only because, number one, they're processed with chlorine, and also they've been peeled, which of course reduces the fiber content. So, if you want some carrots for the little ones, buy the big ones and simply cut them into small pieces. So there we have it, guys. Even more fun facts about the one and only baby carrot. All right, now it's time for the not-so-fun facts. While eating carrots daily is perfectly fine and healthy for most people, eating large amounts can actually turn your skin orange, a medical condition known as carotinemia. Wow, who knew? This occurs due to consumption of lots of beta carotene, the chemical that gives orange veggies like sweet potatoes, pumpkins, and carrots their color. Interesting. Consuming lots of carotene can cause some to be stored under your skin, which can give your skin a tint of orange, especially your face, hands, and feet, although it's otherwise pretty much harmless. So take a look at the picture, ladies and gentlemen. As you can clearly see, this person is more than likely suffering from carotinemia. Why? Because they probably ate too many carrots. Maybe they ate too many <laughs> pumpkins and sweet potatoes. But basically, the uh, carotenoids are being stored uh, underneath uh, this person's skin. So that is what yields the orange color. So if you don't want to turn orange, it's easy. Put down the carrots. <laughs> so there we have it, guys. The not so fun facts about the one and only carrot. All right, it's time to dive into the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule is all about food labels. Yes, it helps us to read and understand food labels. Ultimately, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, when we talk about the 520 rule, really what we're talking about is percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now let's take a look at our sample food label. As you can see, it is divided into three main portions. We have the purple column, we have the yellow portion, and then we have the light blue portion. So at this time, let's take portion by portion. First is the yellow portion. As you can see, it is entitled percent daily value. Now, as you can see, percent DV is basically represented as a percentage. Now, this is a scale, it is a spectrum that goes as low as 0% to as high as 100%. Now, let's take a look at the yellow portion. The yellow portion basically highlights those nutrients which unfortunately do a really good job at promoting illness, sickness, and disease within the human body. So when we talk about saturated fat, trans fats, cholesterol, and sodium, well guys, 
you definitely want to make sure that whatever you're eating or drinking that these percent DVs are as close to 0% as possible. Now, let's take a look at the light blue portion, which highlights dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron. Well, guys, here's the good news. These nutrients do just the opposite of the yellow nutrients. Rather than promote disease, they promote wellness and health within the body temple. So, the next time you eat or drink something, make sure that the percent DVs for these blue nutrients are as close to 100% as possible. Now, if we want to be a little more specific about the 520 rule, here's what we have to offer. If a food or beverage item offers anywhere from 0% to 9% DV, then that food or beverage item is not a good source of that particular nutrient. If the food or beverage item offers 10% to 19% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is not a good, I'm sorry, is a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if the food or beverage item that we're consuming offers 20% DV or greater, then that food or beverage item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys. The ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right. Now that we've talked about the 520 rule, let's now dive deeply into the nutrition facts of carrots. Now for today's lecture, we're going to simply say that a single serving of carrots is only one cup of chopped raw carrots. Notice I said raw, not cooked. So in this single serving, which once again is only a single cup, we're only going to get 52 calories. Look at this, one gram of protein. Now, I know that may be a little, but here's the thing. A lot of people seem to think that plant foods don't contain any protein. Well, guys, that is absolutely untrue. They do. And they also contain 10 grams of carbohydrates. And check this out, 3.5 grams of fiber. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the reasons why I personally think that plant protein is superior to animal protein. Why? Because plant protein comes with fiber. That's right. It also has six grams of sugar. Now check this out. Vitamin A comes in at a whopping 428% DV. Now we just covered the 520 rule and we already know that if any food or beverage offers 20% DV or greater than it is an excellent source. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at 428% DV, this is a super duper, amazingly wonderful source <laughs> of vitamin A. As a matter of fact, one serving, which again is only one cup, is going to provide you with more than four days worth of vitamin A. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. Now, vitamin K comes in at 21% DV, excellent source. Potassium comes in at 12% DV, good source. Next up is vitamin B6 coming in at only 9% DV, not a good source. Then we have thiamine coming in at 6% DV, not a good source. And lastly is niacin coming in at only 6% DV, not a good source. Now, let's take a look at one cup of carrot juice, <laughs> okay? So first we covered raw carrots. Now let's take a look at the nutrition facts for carrot juice. For today's lecture, it's only one cup. Now notice the calories go up, 95 calories. Uh, the grams of carbohydrates go up, 21 grams of carbs. Notice something, that the fiber goes down, right? So now we only have two grams of fiber, nine grams of sugar, and look at this, two grams of protein. Amazing, right? Now, check this out. Vitamin A, oh my God. If you thought the raw carrots were high, well guys, look at this, 903% DV. That's basically nine days worth of vitamin A in only a single cup of carrot juice. Wow, amazing. Next up is vitamin K coming in at 46% DV, excellent source. Vitamin C coming in at 33% DV, excellent source. Vitamin B6 coming in at 25% DV, excellent source. And potassium coming in at 20% DV, excellent source. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please keep something in mind that when we talk about carrot juice, we're talking about us actually 
making our own carrot juice from actual carrots. We're not talking about store-bought carrot juice. We're not talking about bottled carrot juice. We're talking about you taking your carrots and actually creating juice from the actual vegetable itself. So there we have it, guys, the nutrition facts about the one and only carrot and carrot juice. All right. Now that we've gone over the nutrition facts and the 520 rule, it's now time to dive into the health benefits. But before we do, allow me to offer you this. Ladies and gentlemen, 23% Nation, it's time for us to talk about the principle of cause and effect, which basically states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. That being said, Today, not only do I want to give you the health benefit, which te technically is the effect, but then I also want to let you know the cause, which is the phytonutrient, or we can call it the medicine. So here we go. Health benefit number one, carrots protects eye health. So the question is, which phytonutrients, which medicines are responsible? Well, say hello to beta carotene, lutein, and z accent then. Benefit number two. Carrots are a high source of antioxidants. So the question is, which antioxidants, right? <laughs> well, guys, here we go. Vitamin C, beta carotene, leucop I'm sorry, lycopene, lutein, zeaxanthin, polyphenols, succinic acid, alpha ketoglutaric acid, lactic acid, glycolic acid, and caffeic acid. Interesting. Benefit number three, decreases risk for heart disease and strokes. How nice. So the question is, which phytonutrients, which medicines are responsible? Well, the antioxidants, the soluble fiber, the insoluble fiber, and potassium. Benefit number four, helps protect against cancer. Amazing. So now, what's the medicine? Well, say hello to beta carotene, lutein, and polyacetylenes. Interesting. Benefit number five, important for maintaining oral health. Well, what's the medicine? It's called fiber. Benefit number six, boosts skin health and wound healing. So the question is, what's the cause? Well, say hello to beta carotene, lutein, and lycopene. And benefit number seven, protects brain health and cognitive function. Say hello to its antioxidants. So there we have it, guys, the health benefits of the one and only carrot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about food. Yes, plant foods at that. Now, as usual, I went to our go-to website for everything vegan. So say hello to ForksOverKnives.com. By the way, there is a movie which I highly recommend you watch. It's amazing. So as usual, I went to the website, did a little bit of research, and I came across two vegan carrot recipes that I definitely want to share with you. So. Recipe number one is entitled The Perfect Vegan Carrot Cake. Take a look at the picture. Looks amazing, right? Now, let's take a look at the second recipe. It's curried roasted carrot hummus. Take a look at the picture. Looks delicious, yes. Now, if you are inclined to make and taste both of these dishes, then all you have to do is click on the description box. Why? Because I'm providing you with a direct link to both of these recipes. So do me a favor, click on the description box, click on the link, make the dishes, taste the dishes, come back to the video and share your thoughts. So there we have it guys, not one, but two amazingly delicious vegan carrot recipes from ForksOverKnives.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, Thanks for the recipes. Coach D, thanks for the fun facts and not so fun facts and the nutrition facts. But what I really want to know is, when should I eat more carrots? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if that's your question, then I got to tell you that the perfect day to eat more carrots is Nature Day. What? Nature Day? Oh, yes. Good old Nature Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, you may be living under a rock and maybe you've never heard of the challenge before, but that's okay. So allow me to explain. The 23% challenge is a monthly seven-day wellness program 
that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships. Oh, and it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, here's the thing. The 23% challenge is monthly, meaning every month, January all the way through December. And it's only seven days long. As a matter of fact, it's the first seven days of every single month. Now, being that the challenge is the first day, is the first seven days of every month, and being that Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every month. So whether it's August 1st, November 1st, or even December 1st, it's always Nature Day. All right. Now, a lot of us may want to know more about Nature Day. So if that's you, please listen up. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day is all about getting closer to nature. Now, yes, there are lots of different things you can do to get closer to nature, right? But here's what I'm proposing. I suggest we get closer to nature by eating food, but specifically plant foods. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day is all about eating more plants. So I understand that for some of us, it may be a little difficult. So why don't we try to take baby steps, right? So maybe you can only eat plant foods and drink only water before 12 p.m. That way, after 12 p.m., you can eat whatever you want to eat. If before 12 p.m. doesn't work for you, then maybe you can do after 12 p.m. That way, before 12 p.m., you can eat and drink whatever you want. Now, some of us may want to up the ante, right? (laughs) And so you may want to try to become a 3% vegan. Now, What is a 3% vegan? Well, that's anyone, man, woman, or child who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Next up is a 10% vegan, which is any person, man, woman, or child who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only three days out of an entire month. Next up is a 17% vegan, which is any person, man, woman, or child who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only five days out of an entire month. And lastly is the ultimate 23% vegan, which means that you take seven days out of every month to eat only plant foods and drink only water. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be, a 23% vegan. So what does that mean? It means that for the first seven days of every month, I only eat from the five food groups of plant foods, which happen to be fruits, vegetables, and herbs, legumes, meaning beans and peas, nuts and seeds, and of course, whole grains. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We now know what Nature Day is all about. All right. Now, a lot of people may say, well, okay, Coach D, I get it. Nature Day is all about eating more plants and drinking water. Perfect. But who should participate in Nature Day? I mean, is it really for me? Well, let's find out. So maybe you're suffering from the big four, right? Meaning you have heart disease, cancer, obesity, or maybe type 2 diabetes. Maybe you have skin issues such as psoriasis, eczema, pimples, acne. Maybe you have digestive issues like constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, or maybe leaky gut syndrome. Or maybe you have mental issues such as depression, bipolar, anger, sadness, right? (laughs) ADHD, right? And maybe you're looking for a holistic approach to your healing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day is definitely for you. Maybe you're looking to lose a few inches from around your midsection and from your hips and thighs. Or maybe you want to bulk up. Maybe you want to put on some lean, mean muscle, right? Well, you may want to try our vegan lean and vegan bulk programs. Maybe you're looking to transition from the standard American diet to a more whole food plant-based diet. Or maybe you're the type of person who just wants to eat more plants. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you fit any of those descriptions, then yes, Nature Day is definitely for you. All right. Now, for those of us who do want to participate in Nature Day, I want to offer you Coach D's Tips. Well, guys, I'm offering advice. Why? Because I want you to have a successful nature day. So tip number one, go to your local grocery store. Now, when you get there, you're going to go to three places. Number one is the produce section. Number two is the freezer aisle. Number three is the canned good aisle. Now, why the produce section? Well, that's where you're going to find all of your fresh plant foods. Why the freezer aisle? Well, that's where you're going to find all of your frozen plant foods. 
And why the canned good aisle? Well, that's where you're going to find all of your canned plant foods. Now, a lot of people may say, well, Coach D, what's best, fresh, frozen, or canned? Well, guys, I'll put them in this order. And it's based on the amount of nutrients, right? So first is fresh. Second is frozen. And actually, it's a very close second. And third, all the way in the back, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five laps behind is canned. The reason why I put canned last is because, unfortunately, whenever you can any food, whether it's a plant food or an animal product, right, it goes through a lot of processing, which means the nutrient content diminishes, whereas the toxin content goes way up, right? So when you eat canned foods, unfortunately, you may end up putting more toxins in your body than you are nutrients. So there you have it. Tip number two, go to the prepared dishes section. Now, once you're done with the produce section, the canned good aisle and the freezer aisle, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Talk to the person behind the counter and ask them if they have any vegan, not vegetarian options. Ask for a quick sample. Don't worry, it's free. And if you like it, buy it by the pound, maybe two, maybe three pounds if you really, really, really like it. Tip number three, go visit your local farmer's market. Now, this is for those of us who must have non-GMO organic plant foods. The thing about farmer's market is that they only cater to the non-GMO organic plant food market. Plus, you may find cheaper prices. Why? Because the produce is grown locally. That's right. Tip number four, it's time for us to go visit a vegan restaurant. Ladies and gentlemen, vegan restaurants are amazing. Number one, they hire vegan chefs who basically know exactly how to cook plant foods. And on top of that, the chefs know exactly which plant foods to cook together to yield the most nutritious, delicious dishes. Tip number five, get a subscription to a vegan meal prep company. Now, this is for those of us who don't know how to cook plant foods, those of us who don't have time to cook plant foods, or for those of us who just don't want to cook plant foods, right? Well, I say let someone else do the cooking for you. So here's how it works. Give them a call. Get the subscription. They make the food. They deliver the food. You eat the food. Yes, it's just that simple. So there you have it, 23% Nation. Five amazing tips to help make your nature day successful. All right, guys, it's time for our question of the day, which comes from yours truly and the rest of the 23% Nation. We want to know, true or false, carrots are one of the highest contributors of vitamin A in the American diet. Now, I believe I covered this information earlier in the lecture. So if you got it, type your answer in the comment box below. If you didn't quite catch it, just simply hit rewind. So there we have it, guys. Please answer the question in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I leave, I got to ask you to please subscribe, share, comment, and like the video, especially if you love carrots. And don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out. Always remember to take care. God bless and never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.